Welcome back. This is Si Wing Yi, and let's go over another video. Thank you for watching. And if you see value at the end of this video, please smash the like button and also subscribe to my YouTube channel. And finally, uh, you could uh, sign up for our uh, newsletter database on our website below this uh this video so you could become a uh, member a free member of our real estate investing community where you will, you will receive free information on a weekly basis in your email inbox to look at various real estate investing opportunities nationwide thank you so much without further ado let me share my screen and let's get it started once again i'm using redfin uh, website under uh, data center and this article came out a few days ago october 26 and the title is Redfin economist q a advice for people who need to move now while housing costs remain near record high as always i will uh, provide my opinion at the end of this video i will provide my opinion i will de debunk any misleading information that are being talked about i will provide my uh very very honest opinion about it because too often as you know there are so much uh uh misleading inaccurate clickbait type of uh, youtube information out there and many many people just they don't know who to trust, who to believe, because it's uh, so much uh, misinformation, so much doom and gloom, you know, the whole nine yards. You know what I'm talking about. So my goal is to educate and inform you so you can become a highly educated uh, consumer of real estate, whether you can buy a primary home or whether you can potentially buy a real estate investment rental home. Okay, does that make sense? And just a brief background, I've been uh, investing in real estate for more than 30 years. And I have properties throughout the US and thousands of real estate investors, they come to me for advice and recommendation of where to buy, how to buy, what area of the country provide the best opportunity for, especially for mom and pop real estate investors to buy cash flow turnkey investment properties in the best affordable markets in the country. All right, so with that said, let's go over some more great information. So the uh, this uh, article talked about, here it is. Many prospective buyers and sellers have retreated to the sidelines as mortgage rates near 7% and home prices remain high Sending sales and new listings down, but some need to move now. Reference economists advice on how to buy and sell in a uncertain economic landscape. So uh, with rates nearing 7%, why have the home prices falling from a year ago to meet low demand? Speaking of high rates, is it better to continue renting than to buy your first home? Should buyers consider adjustable rate mortgages? Should prospective sellers list their homes now before prices fall? Refin economists, and there are two of them that are being quoted throughout this article, will answer those questions and will share the insights about the state of the housing market. All right. And again, I will provide my strong opinion as always. You can uh, like it or you can not like it. That's just my opinion. And, but I'm very, very confident in my opinion because I have vast amount of experience for several decades uh, helping investors to buy rental properties in the best country and the best uh, areas of the country. All right, so mortgage rates have more than doubled over the last 12 months. Why have the home prices falling? So that's the question number one. And Taylor Marr, Reverend Deputy Chief Economist, so they all said there are two reasons that prices have not dropped. One is supply has fallen in tandem with demand. There you go. And I totally agree. Supply is almost back to a historic low, right? You've been, you've been getting my uh, videos recently for, uh, for this past year. 
home sales are down, listings are down, pending sales are down, you know, uh, buyers not buying, sitting on the sidelines, sellers are, you know, staying put, all those kind of things. So we're creating a, actually, come to think of it, my headline, the biggest headline is homeowners is controlling the housing market. Do you know what I mean by that? I say it again. Homeowners, potential sellers are controlling the real estate market. Nothing else matters, really, if you think about it. This is key trigger because homeowners who have amazed massive amount of wealth and equity in their homes, locked in at 4% rate or lower, they're not going to sell and buy another house to move up to pay 7%. That's crazy. So let me give you a hint for, for the future, not too distant future, perhaps next year sometime. Just, just watch out. If the rate, if the mortgage rate stays around 7%, yeah, you will get a lot of uh, negative information, I, no doubt. But when and if the mortgage rate decreases, how much, I don't know, 6%? Let's say 5%. Mark my words. If the mortgage rate decreased to 5%, we will see a buying frenzy. Many sellers will potentially uh, part away their 3 to 4% fixed rate mortgage and move up to buy another house that they really like for 5%. So sellers will open up their pocketbook and buyers will, will, have, will, will achieve more affordability with a lower mortgage rate, and the housing frenzy may start all over again. It's gonna be the same as uh, uh, during the pandemic. No, the pandemic, you will never see 3% mortgage rate ever again, in my opinion, in our lifetime. So anyway, just some little tidbit that you might want to, uh, uh, ingrain into your brain what I just said. So home buyers and investors, position yourself now to potentially reap the benefit of the future uptick based on what I just said. Make sense? By the way, I want you to uh, comment uh, on my video and I would be more than happy to, uh, to answer some of your, your comments, all right? Anyway, let's go on and go to, all right. So supply, is it low supply? That's, that's, that's no other ways about it. That's all I need to say for right now. So Taylor Mann, Redfin Deputy Chief Economist and Daryl Fairweather, the other Redfin Chief Economist, right? So those are the two that when you see TM, this means Taylor Mar. When you see another acronym, DF, that means Daryl Fairweather. Make sense? All right, so let's continue. Let's see what are their Q&A, what they say, and see whether I agree, disagree, or whatever. All right, and uh, then uh, TM said, the next six or 12 months, prices are likely to fall year over year, possibly by double digits. Ooh, Halloween, scary. <laughs> In some areas. You have to read into the article. Each video, each article you read, whether from the mainstream media, be careful about the headline, about the YouTube image and what have you. You have to read deep, you have to take a deep dive into the article, into the information and focus on some of the words. You know, I focus on very important words like in this word right here, uh, Prices will likely fall year over year, possibly in double digits in some areas. Some in some areas. What does it mean? In I remember three or four, five metros. You have to understand in the US, there are 400 metros that are, they are analyzed by, by uh, Redfin. All right. <laughs> There's a vast overall national market is there's no such thing as a national real estate market. There's a local market. Each local real estate market have their own unique conditions and issues and trends. Just so you know, 
And also, uh, TM, <clears throat> Taylor Mars said, some builders are already offering new homes in bulk to investors. Yes, investors like me and my investors are pounding on certain markets with new builds having a slight, uh, have a lot of incentive. So let's go on. Some builders are already offering new homes in bulk to investors at discounted rates of 10 to 15% off what they had hoped to get. Why? They Because those builders, they plan for their inventory and construction uh, based on six months ago. And now those homes are nearing completion and builders are willing to take a loss to get them off their books as they close out the year end, fiscal year end. Besides, builders, they build based on demand. The, they, they projected way early before this year. <laughs> now that the demand has a big pullback, <clears throat> they have excess homes that are completed. <clears throat> they are sitting in their respective markets. So in order to close out their books, in order to sell those excess inventory, uh, they are offering incentives and discounts to homeowners and investors alike. <clears throat> okay. And yep, that's what's happening when there's a crisis. It, so there's a small window of opportunity. It all depends. Uh, personally, I like to target those uh, new construction homes in the more affordable markets. I'm not going to buy in California, which, by the way, I've been, I've been living here in the San Francisco Bay Area for more than 30 years. So I know about the, the massive, uh, extremely high cost California housing market and so forth and so on. But to our investors, uh, if your investors, you target affordable markets, entry level new construction homes, you know, like uh, 250 to 350,000 price range because you can find renter that able to pay your rent so we can pay your debt service for you and you can achieve positive cash flow with 25% down payment, even at a high 7.5% investors loan rates. Does it make sense? Homeowners? Yeah, those are uh, those fast growing markets in the south and southeast or the prime area to uh, pull the trigger to buy a primary home, even with a higher interest rate for those of you that can afford it. Make sense? Okay, next uh, question. Is the U.S. in a recession? If yes, how is a recession impacting the housing market? Wow, that's a $1 million question or more maybe even a $1 billion question for some people. And the answer by TM is, uh, which I highlight, unemployment is still quite low. This means the job market is still very strong. There are more jobs available than there are people that want to work. So that's a, very, that's a good sign, all right? So yeah, when you have a lot of jobs, I think people have money to spend and what have you, at least for now. Okay, DF, the outside weather said, if the overall US economy does officially enter a recession, it may boost home buying demand because the housing market is particularly sensitive to interest rates. This means even if there's an impending recession, the housing market is still very robust. There are still going to be demand. People need a place to live, right? Agree? All right, and then uh, she goes on to say, the Fed is likely to bring rates back down to encourage spending, which would push mortgage rate down. Wow, isn't that beautiful, right? What goes up must come down. Mortgage rate right now is 7%. I know that you know this, this uh, sudden rise in interest rate really you know, freak spook. The word spook <laughs> uh, people out, but uh, hey, you know, what goes up must come down. All right. Interest rates are temporary. Your financial future is permanent. You must think long term, whether you are a primary home buyer or whether you are a real estate investor. Does that make sense? All right. So, what else? Whether the housing market makes a speedy or gradual recovery depends on the extent of job losses if there are substantial and economic uncertainty that could come in a recession. No one knows, many people that I know of, many experts in my inner circle, they say if 
there's a recession, it will be a mild recession. But uh, I will prove it to you because during the past several recession in the past 30 years, uh, the recession, with the exception of 2008, by 2008 is an outlier, is a, is a market crash, is a real estate crash of epic proportion. I'm not going to get into that, but most importantly, most other recessions, real estate have uh, done well uh, immediately afterwards. So that is a the recession very mild. So uh, real estate will recover very, very quickly after the recession was, uh, most recessions are really short, like uh, nine months to a year. Depends, right? So uh, that don't, don't let that scare you, <laughs> all right? So let's continue. Uh, all right, so uh, uh, Zen Zhao, Refin Economic Research Team lead, the third person, quoting here, he said, a foreclosure crisis is unlikely today because lenders have upped their standards since 2008, and most homeowners would have equity in their home even if value dropped by 10% or so. I agree, that's right. Because you cannot have a risk crash when you does not have any stress uh, sellers. And most homeowners, they are not in a stressful situation as I already told you, because many homeowners have massive amount of equity in their home. They don't need to sell. They are locking the very low uh, mortgage rate even if they uh, suffer some kind of financial crisis, they can always rent their houses because the rental market is at a historical high. There are more renters than ever in the US modern history. How, uh, how long is the modern history? 100 years or longer, all right? So there are more renters than ever for obvious reasons, right? Because they cannot afford to buy due to 40 year affordability, uh, uh, low uh, because of the rise skyrocketing housing prices in the past during the pandemic and and sudden rise of interest rate. Okay, next uh, question is: What is your advice for prospective primary home buyers? Should they hold off and hope prices and mortgage rate come down, or swoop in now before rates potentially climb? higher yes is that another million dollar question and uh df uh, daryl fairweather said divorce death job relocation or growing family i call it the triple d death divorce and disability will create a stressful situation for the home owner so uh with that except with, with those exception uh Anybody else in different scenario? Uh, the, the, the factor is for somebody that want to buy, even in today's uh, housing environment, uh, TM, TM Taylor Mar said, if someone is going to stay in a home for 10 years, it is unlikely the home will lose value. There you go. Short term, we go through a, a corruption. We all know that. The long term, if you hold any realistic assets for seven to 10 years. History indicates that the housing, that the house will increase in value. History does not lie. 7% okay. uh, mortgage rate are a tough pill for a lot of people to swallow, but there's a silver lining to high rates. Competition is low and buyers have the opportunity to negotiate with sellers, of course. That's right, it's not all doom and gloom, right? Okay, next question. Can today's buyer get away with a low ball offer? What are your other tips for negotiation with the seller? And I highlighted the most important answer, which is right here. Why are you increasingly, who's, who's saying this? Uh, TM, Taylor Marr. While it is increasingly common for sellers to cover the buyer's closing costs, there are other ways to ease the burden on the buyer's pocketbook negotiate on the terms of the offer and ask for concessions. For example, include inspection contingency and ask the seller to cover the cost of necessary repairs. I also recommend buyers ask for a seller concession to help buy down their mortgage rates, which will mitigate some of the impact of higher rates. There you go. Buyer have more negotiation power 
for the reason just stated. And as we're almost concluding, five more minutes. Bear with me, guys. So who should buy a home right now? Who should rent? Well, there's always a percentage of buyer can pay all cash. Believe me, a lot of people still have money. I would say around 21 quarter of all home purchases in the U.S. It has been purchased with all cash. So they don't care about mortgages. No issues with that. So that's, and lot, again, much to much to some people's surprise, there are sectors of the country whereby you're not seeing the ups and downs, the corruption, the reduction of prices, whatever. And one of the areas of the country where, yeah, you, you, you're, where you're seeing a lot of stability in terms of home prices are in the Midwest, of course, Midwest, Ohio, Illinois, Indiana, uh, you know, uh, uh, Missouri, Tennessee, Michigan, you know, uh, those areas are is what you call you know Midwest or, you know what I what I also call a uh, rust belt state instead of sun belt state well anyway uh, so those prices are very very stable all right home values are likely to decline most in pandemic boom times like Phoenix Boise and Austin and also the, uh, the, the the big metros in California, of course, my area, San Francisco Bay Area, LA, San Diego, Chicago, Boston, New York City, yes, uh, and New Jersey somewhere. Yeah, you know, you're gonna see some steep decline because those are what I call uh, or cyclical housing markets, right? They go up and down pretty dramatically, uh, more so than many other parts of the country. That's history. It happened before. It's happening right now, but. No, you, again, you think long term, things will come back. Okay, don't have a tunnel vision. Don't have this short term perspective. All right, let me see what else uh, as we conclude this. Renting is more ex expensive than ever too. So what's your advice for prospective renters? Yep, rental payments have surged since the pandemic started and with the typical asking rent increasing tremendously in metro areas like Austin, Nashville, Seattle, Miami and uh, certain parts of Florida and certain other parts of Texas uh, and the South and Southeast because the home prices were so cheap uh, historically in, the, in those areas. So their rental increases in the past couple of years, like we've seen like 30, 40, 50% rental increases in those areas. You understand me? So, you know, they're gonna subside. Then they're gonna go back to rent normal increases in alignment with inflation. So if you want to become a landlord, if you're already a real estate investor, renting your house to someone, uh, you are getting more cash flow because rents are, uh, are getting higher because there's so many people are renting. The, you know, the, the, it's a renter's nation these days and you can achieve more cash flow because uh, you can, you're able to raise your rent and the renter is going to pay it off your debt service, including your mortgage and everything else in the whole nine yards and you still can cash flow even with the interest rate it is right now. But uh, I'm not, I'm not going to go any further because it's, uh... all right. So, and as we conclude this, should buyers consider using an adjustable rate mortgage or a two to one buy down instead of a 30 year fixed rate mortgage to secure a lower rate? What about taking a high rate now with the hope of refinancing in the future? Wow, two good question. So let's look at some of the answers. Uh, so uh, let me see. Adjustable rate mortgages often come with lower interest rates, yes, but they are risky because the rate resets after a fixed period of time. A 5-1 arm, the most common type of adjustable rate mortgages is a loan in which the interest rate is fixed for the first five years and then adjust once a year for the remainder of the loan. Typically, 30-year fixed rate mortgages are in currently 6.94%, uh, uh, while a 5-1 arm are at 5.81%. So two to one buy down is a mortgage agreement where home buyers and sellers pay to provide lower interest payments for the first two years of a loan, the agreement typically provides a low interest payment for the first year of loan, a slightly higher rate for the second year, and a full rate for the remainder of the loan term. So uh, 
I'm not going to say what you should do. Everybody's situation is, is different. Consult with your loan agent to see what's appropriate for your situation. I'm not even going to make any recommendation because it's such a personal decision, uh, what have you. So I uh, also, uh, uh, the comment, uh, the expert also comment, it is more difficult to qualify for a uh, farm. By the way, these days, it's very difficult to, uh, to get any kind of loans, let alone a 30 year fixed rate mortgage or a 5 1 arm. You still have to go to a full doc loan underwriting, which is very, very string, uh, string, uh, stringent. Stringent. Not like the 2008 market crash when everybody that can fog a mirror can qualify to get a mortgage. So that, that they're in causing the, uh, the housing crisis back in 08. Nowadays, they're completely different. We have very, very qualified buyers that have substantial equity in their homes. So no stress sale, no market crash. Some of you might still disagree with me, put it down in the comments, perhaps not. I'm not going to uh, answer to silly comments. <laughs> no crash. All right. All right, let me see what else. Uh, historically, most people who purchase a home has been able to refinance for a low rate within five years, giving the decades long downward trend in interest rates. So there you go. I mean, this uh, is not all doing bloom. No matter what loan you're gonna get right now, th knowing that you have to believe, you have to believe that the interest rate will eventually come down. And when it come down, you refinance. I, I'm gonna use this term. I know some of you thinking it's a cheesy term. I know, but I'm still gonna use it. It really still makes sense. You date the interest rate, but you marry the house, okay? So think about whatever that means. There are many, several meanings to it, but uh, the interest rate can come and go, but the house stays forever. Does that make sense? <laughs> All right, so let me conclude this. Uh, how much? Okay, a oh, few more minutes. Bear with me, guys. All right. Uh, <clears throat> So what advice, what's your advice for prospective sellers? Should they wait to list until mortgage rates drop? Well, good question. Consider, uh, for sellers, uh, some of you could consider renting out your home partially or, the, or by room or, uh, or the whole house instead of selling right away. You can cash in on a high rental demand, of course, and wait to sell until prices potentially rise again in a year or two. That's right. Good comment. And then TM, Tilamar said, demand could come back sooner than we expect. Good. I like that. I like the optimistic view because buyers may get used to higher rates. When people were you but we're used to 3% rate, a 5% rate sounded miserable. Now that rates are nearing 7%, a 5% rate seems like a deal. <laughs> if rates go down to 5.5% in the next six months, that may be feel good to buyers and improve demand. We saw that over the summer when rates dropped from 6% to around 5% briefly, the demand bounced up. So and the final question is, what's your advice for people who find themselves obsessing over the current housing market downturn and rising interest rates? And the answer is by DF. Uh, so uh, I look at prospective sellers are bummed because they miss a golden opportunity to sell uh, before this year started, but look at look back at two years, five years, or ten years, and appreciate how much your home has gone up in value. Don't compare to six months. Don't have this short term vision. Think long term, guys. If you learn nothing from this video, think you know uh, market housing market just like stock market come come up it goes up and down, but long term they always go up, always gain value. So if you bought your home. In the last two years, you probably have a low mortgage rate that keeping your mortgage payments down. And TM finally said, for most homeowners, up and down in the market doesn't mean much, except on paper. Think big picture, I agree. Take a step back and 
and from looking at daily, weekly, or monthly movement. Just don't get paralyzed with all this up and down, you know, volatility, fluctuations, all these kind of things. I mean, don't stress yourself out, okay? Just don't be a, a YouTube serial watcher. YouTube serial watcher. Okay, well, except watching my videos, that's fine. I I I I, <laughs> I encourage that, but try to prevent watching other garbage videos out there. Most of them are clickbait. Oh, crash this, crash that. Come on. They are meant to scare you so those YouTube channels can get more subscribers, so it can sell, so they can advertise, so they can make money. They make money selling negative news. You have to understand what's going on with with uh, the world of YouTube. And uh, for that matter, the mainstream me uh, media, same thing, the Yahoo's of the world, uh, 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 CNBC and, and Fox News, they pro pro yeah, Yahoo, they put out all this recent information on a daily basis. They have this, this uh, you know, uh, very, very, uh, uh, doom and gloom headlines, negative, negative headlines. Uh, anyway, that's okay. Enough. That's all I have to say. So anyway, if you see value of my video presentation, please click the like button and and subscribe to my YouTube channel because I have weekly videos, uh, very very authentic, very uh, objective. Uh, I provide my best experience with my uh, opinions. But uh, it's no doom and gloom. No, the, the world's not coming to an end. And, you know, you're not going to be homeless, whatever, for most of you. But uh, I provide great content, I hope, I think, for primary home buyers out there in the country. And also for current real estate investors or uh, prospective newbie real estate investors that want to uh, uh, invest in real estate. So if you want to do that, Come to my channel below, click on my link, put down your yeah, sign up for our, our newsletter, free newsletter. You could become a free member of our real estate community. So you receive weekly email newsletters on great practical real estate investing information. Thank you so much. This is Sylvan Yi. I will see you on the next video. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.